I, I bet wishes that we didn't do a show like this and there weren't newspaper reporters and internet reporters and bloggers and vloggers? You know who I bet wishes that? Who? Oh. Wilbur Valdez. Really? I think these cats at Union City are reading their clippings <laughs> and listening to what people are saying about him. So does he. So does he. Jimmy, I went on and on. He about brings it up, though. He does. And how good this Union City team was going to be. And we stood there after the Bosco scrimmage and yeah. he challenged their toughness. And when I started getting reports from Exeter and Malone yeah. that Seton Hall Prep was beating Union City Friday night up at the Eagle's Nest. By 10 at the half. I couldn't, I was like, oh my gosh, boy, did I really estimate this team the wrong way. I don't think Coach is real happy with the way they played, well, they, at least well, they, in the first half. They finished in your top 25. Last they did. year, they did. And for you know, number sixteen, and for Union City, that's a lofty place to be. Yeah. And they had three losses, only two on the field. Right. The last of which was a shootout to Montclair, what forty to thirty-five. The most bizarre football game of the season. Right. So I mean, and and they come back with a lot of guys. Yeah. So you have you know these you know we a saw lot of dudes, dudes, and we saw them scrimmage with Don Bosco and you know you know trade punches a little bit, which is very impressive for for a public school to do that. Not that Bosco was you know ever in, 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 in any doubt in that game of, of prevailing in that scrimmage. But, you know, so you're thinking, all right, Seton Hall prep, they'll get off on the right foot here. Hold everything at the half. Well, I think what they found out right away was Zach Keller, the junior, 6'5", 210-pound Seton Hall quarterback. Yeah. He's very good. Good player. Yeah, he's very good. Um, what they also found out is that football, if you add up 12 and 12, that's 24. That's a half. You stunk up the joint for 24 minutes, and then you add up 12 and 12, that's 24, there's a second half of football. Yeah. Worked out pretty well. Mm. At the half, Jim, you said it, they were down, and on this play, they were down seven nothing until Rinaldi Tavares, the quarterback, who's a half-year starter last year, he's pretty smart, get the ball to old Dominion bound Jonathan Castellano. And Johnny Boy goes in from 54 yards out, tied it at seven. Second quarter, Vincent Nisavosia, Look at that pitch for Keller. Ball. Keller's really good. 14-7 field goal gives him a 10-point lead at the break. So, Mike, they're up 10. Then Seton Hall's on a six-minute drive out of the gate in the third quarter. But here's where the game changes. Daber Lasia with the pick 63 yards later. The soaring Eagles are right back in this game, down just 17-14. I mean, it could have been 24-7 if they finished that drive. But just like that, Seton Hall Prep will return the ensuing kickoff 69 yards for a Ooh. touchdown. So they're down 10. Union City is not for long. Tavares, smart. Go to DQ Kelly. Daquan, 51 yards. A Syracuse recruit puts Union City within a field goal. And then the UC defense making their presence. Again, Noel Rojas, the start of a huge night for number 23. And then moments later, Tamane Boyd played at 225 last year, up to 240. I'd like to see him drop a little bit of weight. But right there, didn't matter got into the end zone from 42 yards out. They had the lead at 28-24. And what a bizarre scoring summary in this game. From 17-7 at the half, from there they go 41-7. to What you saw there was Rojas get his first of three touchdowns in the final 12 minutes. What you see here is Boyd. This is why a lot of schools, that is old fashioned, get out my way. But you know what? I think if he was 15 pounds lighter, he would have gotten into the end zone. So Rojas says, hey, boy, thanks a lot. I'll take it. His last of three touchdowns in the final quarter, 41-7 to in the second half. They win the game 48-24. to Rojas with the big fourth quarter, but he wasn't done. He had to talk to John Malone right after the game. Defense is always the heart of the soul of the team, so we just had to play more defense and have more courage in ourselves and be tougher. So that's what we said. We went in the locker room and said, this is not us. Let's play what we do, and that's what we came out and did. DQ, uh, you didn't get any offensive touches the whole first half. You weren't, you know, a couple of underthrown balls here or there. Finally, they get it to you for the big uh, momentum change and touchdown. How did that feel? It felt great. Um, we worked we worked our bus off. We, we had a talk in the locker room with our coach, a lot of students, and we were focused. We wanted to win it more than they did. So we came first half, we, we kind of slacked, and second half, we picked it up. How about uh, some of the, you know, the power running kind of changed in the second half? Tamane, you know, they opened up some holes for Tamane. He was able to run downhill a little bit more, get into the end zone. Noel had three touchdowns. How great was the running game? It was, it was 
was great. Like we said, we had that talk in the um, room. We, we told him to run downhill as fast as he can. He, he couldn't get tackled. He's a, he's a big dude. He, he got he to keep running, keep running. You know, you're talking, though, uh, last week we were at the Bosco scrimmage, and you were talking to them about toughness and being tough. And uh, did you could you at least see some of that in that second half that maybe you guys kind of out-toughed them? It seemed like you guys out-toughed them in the end of that game. Absolutely. The guys in the trenches definitely toughed it up. Uh, we had a couple kids cramping and, and, and hurting, and, and that was the key word. They did toughen up, and that, that's what helped them get, get the W. Mm. I like the fact that their band is still playing way after the game. Did you hear them in the background? Very entertaining. Now, do you think Kelly uh, DQ? went with the orange hair because he's going to Syracuse? He didn't have the orange hair against Bosco. Did You're you right. pick that up? I don't know. I mean, he could be doing that in honor of his head coach who played for the U. They got a little orange there. Good point. And, and listen... What you saw in the second half, they got they got guys. I mean, Tavares, <laughs> Kelly, Rojas, Boyd. I mean, you know, it, it's going to be hard to play four quarters uh, against them. And I could the collision course oh. is set. September twentieth, it'll be a rematch, Union City against Montclair. And for a September public school football game, that's as good as it gets. The last time I was really really excited about a big group classification public school football game. It was actually at Montclair. It was three years ago. Remember when East Orange came in? Yeah. And Montclair dismantled yeah. them with Khalif Urban. Montclair's a very, I mean, Jimmy, they are a program. They, interesting you know. game this week. They go to Craig Nielsen's Pascac Valley team, who has everybody back from the Group 4 right. championship. If Montclair is looking ahead to the 20th, yeah, you're right. watch out. You're right. What? Because we know. Coach Nelson with that ponytail, he's going to come in there <laughs> and he's going to get a uh, great football coach. Yeah. Great football coach. So uh, one of the things I found very interesting in the post game is, you know, Kelly played in the game, Boyd played in the game, Rojas played in the game. Those guys I thought were pretty composed. I thought John Malone seemed out of breath. I thought he seemed he, well, he asked long questions. I think he was tired. <laughs> 